Now, I'm not sure if Marcus Rashford will be cursing or thanking his teammate Luke Shaw for this one. Luke Shaw, when asked about the chances for Marcus Rashford to win the Ballon d'Or, said if he keeps going and keeps pushing himself, there's no reason he couldn't win the Ballon d'Or one day. What do you think, Shaka Hislop? Could the Ballon d'Or be in the Englishman's future? Uh, I'm not so sure. Listen, I, I, love, I love Marcus Rashford. I think he's an incredible talent. I will only get better. I also sympathise with Luke Shaw, feeling almost as though he had to say that uh, about the teammate. But if I were a gambling man and I had to put a bet on, on whether Rashford would one day win the Ballon d'Or or not, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I think the, the odds favour not. Now, stranger things have happened. People have had incredible seasons that, that maybe you, you don't necessarily see coming. Can Rashford follow in, in the footsteps of, of Michael Owen, let, let's say? That, that, of course, is, is, is a possibility. But when you look at the talents around world of football right now, not just the, the two who have dominated that, um, that voting for, for quite some time, but you look at the pretenders to, to, to that very trophy in Neymar, in Kylian Mbappe, in Erling Haaland, who continues to, to establish himself um, in, in, in those same, same lights. Right now, I see Rashford very much on the outside looking in. Yeah, as you mentioned, Luke Shaw probably stuck between a rock and a hard place mm. there because it was a fan's question in one of those Q&A style things. But you did mention a couple of young players that maybe are ahead of him right now in Kylian Mbappe and Erling Haaland. But that does suggest that maybe he could make a Ballon d'Or podium? Possibly. Yeah, listen, no, no question that's a possibility. I, I, as I say, and especially when you're talking about players this age, and you and I have spoken about Haaland's consistency and Sancho's inconsistency. Uh, Rashford, quite similarly, given what you see from him in Manchester United, as big a club as that is with the platform that that affords him, playing in the England national team and um, the partnership he, he, he's found with, with Sterling and Kane. And, um, absolutely, he is in position to, to maybe make that claim. But... There's a lot more that can go right as far as that's concerned in, in terms of a Ballon d'Or voting. So he, he's in as good a place as any. But again, right now, on the outside looking in, and there are any number of, of young players similarly who may have that kind of platform. We could talk about Jaden Sancho, as, as we did on his inconsistency. Where will he end up for next season? What kind of platform does that afford him? Um, in, in terms of his own visibility at club level. What are, are his futures with, with, the, with the England national team? There are a number of players um, who we can talk about in, in, a, in a similar vein, and all of a sudden it gets to be a pretty crowded room. He seems to have found his place out on the left there, and there's lots mm. of talk about Jadon Sancho coming into Manchester United. What do you think of a front three with Martial, uh, also, Rashford and the likes of Jaden Sancho. Yeah, listen, that, that's an incredible front three. Um, we, we mentioned the role that Rashford played uh, with, with the England national team. And as much as he's saying that he preferred to play through the middle for Manchester United, you look at the, the role that, that he, he performs out wide in, in the England national team and, and his understanding of, of, of that role. That, that, that's a, a good front three. If you, if you can... First of all, get them all together and we'll be speculating about Jaden Sancho for quite some time. I think Martial himself has shown how bright a talent he is, but he's similarly inconsistent. Sometimes looks a, looks a little bit moody, if, if you ask me. But if you get all three of those together and all three of those singing from the same uh, song sheet with, with a, a consistency that, that goes with, with their talents, that, that, that's a pretty uh, fearsome trident. Before his back injury, though, and obviously we'll be seeing him back now, you have to say, he said it himself, Marcus Rashford having the best season of his career so far. And obviously he's been in the public eye for so long. Is it admirable the way he's dealt with all that attention at such a young age? Yes, absolutely. I, I, I don't know how teenagers now deal with not just the money that comes into the game, but the exposure, uh, the limelight. It's, it's, it's a goldfish bowl. I, I played my first professional game in the lower leagues at 23. So I, I, even then, I was a little bit more mature than, than they are now and having to deal with, with the added pressure. It, it's absolutely admirable. And, and for them to, again, do as, as they've done, 
it, it speaks volumes to, to them as characters, and which is why I continue to, to believe in their talents, particularly in the long term. Now, I'll be critical of them when they have lean spells. I, that's another part of the territory. But I continue to believe in, in, in how good players they are and how good they, they ultimately will be. Because the timing worked perfectly for a player like Marcus Rashford in having a club manager like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and a national team manager like Gareth Southgate. I think it's, it certainly worked well with, with Southgate and, and the role that he's been asked to play, again, away from what he says is his is, is preferred role. Solskjaer has, has shown a real self-belief, uh, has, has shown real belief in, in Marcus Rashford and allowing, allowing him to, to be at his best and almost dictating um, his own role within that Manchester United setup. The the I, I think the haze around that is the continued speculation around Solskjaer. And before the lockdown, we were talking about Manchester United seeming to rebound and seeming to to, to find their feet under Solskjaer. Um, but I, I I don't feel that speculation goes away. Certainly not anytime soon. Uh, especially while there are other other managers still out there, kind of with higher pedigrees. And, and you wondering if Manchester United would be kind of looking over that, that way and as a result, Solskjaer looking over his own shoulder nervously. That doesn't help in the dressing room either. That doesn't help Solskjaer, that doesn't help any of the players, especially players who, who are trying to settle and continue, continue to establish themselves as, as Rashford is. So we wait to see how that all plays out. Just looking at his stats this season, though, and when he has been fit, where does he rank in terms of importance to the team for Manchester United? Is he up there at the top as one of the most important players this season? Without question. Listen, Bruno Fernandes came in and totally transformed um, everything about Manchester United. So as we sit right now, without question, he is the most important player in, in that Old Trafford dressing room. And while Paul Pogba continues to be as he, as he has, Player for the last 12 or 18 months, you look around at, at the important players, the and the players who um, who impact that team greatest, and and yeah, Rashford comes second, probably only only to Bruno Fernandez. Time will tell if he will make that Ballon d'Or podium, but in the near future, it looks like he will be a permanent fixture in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's first eleven at Manchester United. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.